I'm Janelle Murray. I am the Director of Substance Use Disorder Services for St. Alec County Health Department. I'm also the Vice President for St. Alec County Families Against Narcotics. So if you're more interested in that, I did pass the flyer around also. <laughs> um, got a lot of initials behind my name, MPH. I um, specialize in public health. And then CPSD is that I'm a certified prevention specialist. So this really has zoned in on substance abuse and substance use disorders. So that's really where my specialty is. That's why I felt comfortable coming today last minute talking about vaping. <laughs> um, any questions or comments that you have while I'm going through it, please raise your hand or just blurt it out. I don't care. I like interactive talking and really I want to get you guys the information that you came here to get. Um, I might not have put everything in there because I wanted to make it broad and you know hit a couple things but just please let me know if you have any questions. So is vaping safe? Do we all know the answer? <laughs> it is not. Um, E-cigarettes are not safe for youth, young adults, um, pregnant women, or adults who currently do not smoke. They did not include adults that smoke because it's just as harmful as smoking. So if you're smoking already regular cigarettes, you're going to be just as harmful if you're smoking e-cigarettes. Um, it does contain nicotine and other chemicals. Um, secondhand vape is also harmful. So now a lot of people will smoke um, or vape because it seems like nothing's coming out or it's just water vapor coming out. That's not true. The um, chemicals that are going in your body are also coming out. Um, and then more research is needed to understand the long-term health effects. Vaping has only been around since about 2006, and so it's fairly new. A lot of the studies that we have been um, <clears throat> researching shows the same effects so as cigarettes. It has no difference. So they all have nicotine in They don't all, but 99% of the e-cigarettes bought do, have, do contain nicotine. You can get it without it, though. I did go um, online to go try to purchase um, some e-juice, it's called, and I'll talk more about that later, but um, all the ones that I looked at had nicotine in it. So it's really, you have to be very careful about looking at the labels. Except for percentage. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So everyone knows that vaping is bad for you. If not, you know now. <laughs> um, but when it comes to vaping, almost half our cur current users didn't believe that there was any health risks at all. Um, the misconception is likely because of um, misleading advertising. So has anybody ever seen an advertisement about how it's safer for you or it's water vapor? <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> Um, because it's so new, it still is able to be marketed in a different way, so people aren't going to be like, oh, it's that harmful for me because there hasn't been many studies on it yet. Um, they have fewer hazardous chemicals than conventional cigarettes, but that doesn't mean it's safe. They're just different chemicals in there. And you'll hear a lot about them being safe, but that's all the ingredients separately, and I'll talk about the ingredients in a little bit. But once they're combined and then heated, that's when it gets dangerous, and it can be more dangerous than an actual cigarette. So components. So this is just kind of going over what um, parts to an electronic cigarette. So any type of vape will have all these components also. There's different sizes and different, um, I guess, kind of vapes. So this is all what they look like on the inside though. Um, and everything kind of works together. It's going to start off using the microprocessor. It controls the lighter and the heater. So what it has in there, it has this e-cig juice or this vape. Um, it's either going to be a wax or a juice. It needs to be heated up so it can turn into vapor so you can inhale it. Um, so once the microprocessor starts heating up, the sensor detects when the um, smoker draws on the cigarette. So it's going to go ahead and let you know it's ready to smoke it. Um, the cartridge will hold the nicotine and other flavors and propylene glycol. So it's going to hold it in there and it just, usually they'll start off clear, but as you, if you've ever seen a vape and somebody that vape, vapes for a while, it will turn into a darker color because it's this bad nicotine, it's the nicotine and all the other chemicals reacting. <clears throat> the heater then vaporizes the nicotine and you're able to inhale it. So once that heat hits the chemicals, that's when things get very dangerous. Once again, all the ingredients may not be as harmful by themselves when they're mixed together and then heated, that is when they're harmful. Um, and then usually at the end, there'll be an LED um, light that will, so it'll um, 
look like a normal cigarette or you know some people want it to look a certain way so it'll light up at the end kind of give you like oh I'm smoking a cigarette <laughs> if you wanted that <clears throat> so as I mentioned there's different types of vapes so the first one um, that's going to be more of the disposable vape they're designed to look more like a cigarette or sometimes the second one you see it's just all black it's just very sleek looking um, compact or compact and um, easy to use the one all the way to with the green box around it, those are called mods. Those are bigger looking vapes. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these in person and I'm working on getting some for presentations to <laughs> pass around, but those are pretty big. They, I would say they're bigger than this remote right here. So you're going from this tiny little disposable one over there to this mod, which you have to um, put your own e-juice in that one too. So usually cartridges will come for the littler ones. The big ones, you have to put your own juice into, this, um, into it. Has anybody ever heard of a Juul? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, at my last job, I actually purchased one of these because I was like, I have to see what these look like. And it really does just look like a little USB. It's tiny. Um, as you can see kind of at the bottom, this is the charger. It goes right in your computer. And then it, the Juul just stands right up on it and charges it. <laughs> yes. When I did go buy one before, um, for presentation purposes, not to smoke, <laughs> but um, there was a $25 off coupon or something. So there's a lot of advertisement around these so that'll get you to buy something. And I thought, I'm buying it for work, so that's okay. <laughs> but it does, that's how it kind of gets you to, like, oh, it's cheaper than smoking, because, and then it looks cooler than smoking. It's so sleek, and it looks like something that you can have in your backpack and not get in trouble for, we'll put it that way. <clears throat> So um, the e-juice, so this is what's going to be inside of the vapes. There's all these different flavors, all these different um, strengths of nicotine, different strengths of different chemicals. Everyone's harmful. It doesn't really matter. And like I was saying earlier, 99% of these juices that are bought are going to have um, nicotine in them. 81% um, of kids who ever used tobacco products started with a flavored product. As an adult, I don't really think that a flavored cigarette sounds amazing. Um, but as a kid, if you see something like a slushy, you'd be like, oh, that looks really cool. <laughs> or, you know, like when you're a kid, you like the flavored chapsticks. That's what it kind of reminds me of. <laughs> but so they come up with these crazy and cool flavors. That's what people think. And so they think it's not very harmful. I'm smoking something fruity. It's not so bad for me. Just as bad. They just are masking the nicotine with a flavor. So I just wanted to kind of go over Juul again. This is the growth of Juul use. Um, over the years, this has been really the number one. Um, I'm not sure how fast it grew in this county, but I know that it's very prevalent in this county now. Um, most people, not just kids, but people do like the sleeker look of it. It doesn't look like a cigarette, so it doesn't seem like you're smoking a cigarette. So people will prefer that. Um, the cartridges that they do come with, those hold um, just a pack of cigarettes in one little cartridge, which I think I have a slide on that. But so the people are, could be smoking this faster and faster too um, than a normal, say if you had a pack of cigarettes versus a jewel in a pod, um, because they can smoke it anywhere. They can smoke it inside. They can smoke, you have to go usually outside if you're in public, I guess, to smoke. But there's a huge thing, and that's really why jewel has been growing because of the, the target population of the youth that it's been targeting. Yes, one jewel pod, one jewel pod. And if you guys have ever seen them, they are very, very tiny. They're little, they hide them in your hands. Mm -hmm. I have a kid in my class and he'll just sit here like this. Mm -hmm. And he'll say, give it. Yes. They're that small. Yes. Yeah, they're they so easily hit. Yep, this little thing, it's a jewel pod. It really is, you could fit like that in your hands. It's, yes. it's very tiny. Um, that is one pack of cigarettes. Mm. For the jewel, oh, that I did not look. Um, I just I it's like $15 for four pods. Yes, that oh. sounds about right because I think it was $35 for the starter pack that included the actual smoking device. Yeah. Um, yes. But they're hitting it all the time. 
Correct. Of the time. So they're, they're doing way more than a pack. Yes, and oh, that's what people wow. don't realize is that wow. they think, oh, it's not so bad for me, but they can hit it wherever they want, whenever they want. They'll bring it to school. They'll bring it anywhere. They'll sit in their bedroom and smoke it. You can't just so, smoke a cigarette in school. So there's no smoke with it? No. There is when you blow out, but it's very, it doesn't smell. That's the whole thing. Well, they've got some that smell. Paper. That's what gives my kids away. Oh, you can smell them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, is when you buy a box of the cartridges, you get four of them. So it's initially you're buying four packs of cigarettes for 15 bucks. And in a sense, it is cheaper that way. But like she said, you go through it so quickly that it's not. Ooh. Yes, And they exactly. don't understand that. Yes. Wow. Is it pretty bad in school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is huge. We have it is huge. We've got fifth graders. Oh, a fifth grader, yep. Where do you teach? teach? Sandusky. Yeah. Sandusky. Sandusky. At the high school. How do they get them? They 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 they're out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Vaping, it's vapor, it's water vapor. No, it's not. E-cigarette vapor is not water vapor. It's an aerosol made of ultrafine particles containing nicotine and harmful chemicals. So it's just pretty much like putting a can of hairspray in your mouth. It's aerosol. That's how it's going to hurt your lungs just the same. Are you guys ready for all the fun ingredients? <laughs> all right, so um, nicotine first ingredient. What can nicotine, nicotine do to you? That can alter your blood pressure, that can give you headaches, that can um, slow your breathing down, that can induce asthma. There's a lot of different things that nicotine does, um, but that's usually the, a number one ingredient in one of the, um, in the vaping pens. Formaldehyde, anybody know what that's used for usually? Mm -hmm. Dead people. <laughs> so why are we smoking it? <laughs> um, Formaldehyde is not that harmful unless heated up when you're with the vape. So it, it's nothing that you're going to want to eat, but it's, it shouldn't be as harmful as it is to your body, but you're heating it up again and then inhaling the particles of it, and that's why it's so harmful. Um, acetaldehyde. Um, this is, actually, I had to write some notes down, guys. Don't mind me. Um, This is not added to cigarettes by tobacco producers. Rather, um, it's produced when tobacco additives, so the stuff that's in there, the sugars, um, the sorbitol, and the glycerin are burned. So this is what's going to be produced when you are burning. Um, so it's one of the main components of the cigarette smoke. And this is something that will um, hurt your lungs um, and start an infection type thing sometimes in there. Um, acrolein is not added to tobacco, rather it's produced during smoking. So this is another thing, when all the ingredients are put together and heated, it's going to produce that. Probably should put it up there, huh? <laughs> um, it's inhaled in smaller amounts by passive smokers, so this will come out as secondhand smoke, and this will um, reactivate substances that will cause irritation. So when people are around secondhand smoke and your eyes get irritated, your throat gets irritated, um, things like that, that's what that chemical is. Um, diacetyl, anybody ever heard of that before? Now this is kind of one of those um, that they talk a little bit more about because they say it's safe. This is something um, that's in butter flavoring, so fake butter like on popcorn. It's not found to be harmful if you eat it. It's found to be harmful if you heat it up and inhale it. So again, some people are saying um, these e-cigs are safer than cigarettes. No, they're not. Because the FDA says that this is safe, but it's safe to eat. It's not safe to inhale. <clears throat> so this will, um, this is the ingredient. Anybody ever heard of popcorn lung? Um, this is the ingredient that causes that. It's going to be going into your lungs and causing um, inflammation and then uh, a disease that's kind of like uh, pulmonary, yep, pulmonary, yep. So it's really going to kind of screw up your lungs and create a lot of problems in that site. 
And then two, three, um, pentadione. This is a flavor. This is also found to be safe by the FDA. Safe to eat, not safe to inhale though. Um, this is a flavoring chemical. Um, small inhalations of this changes gene expression in your body though. So this is something that becomes cancer causing because it's mutating genes in your body. Propylene glycol, anybody ever heard of that? I watch a lot of murder shows. <laughs> <laughs> antifreeze, ever hear antifreeze poisoning? Yeah. People die from propylene glycol. <laughs> I always throw that in there, antifreeze. <laughs> Um, so that's what, it's, it's a very dangerous substance for you to be inhaling. Um, people can die from ingestion of that, so you could also poison yourself by inhaling it. Vegetable glycerin, anybody ever heard of that? Again, FDA says it's safe. It's safe to eat, not safe to inhale. So that's really, a lot of this, the safety of these e cigs are coming from them being safe to eat but not safe when you're heating it up, especially with all of them together, and then when you're inhaling it. And then there's also 8,000 plus other chemicals in there. Yeah. So who wants a cocktail of all that? <laughs> Anybody ever hear that there's marijuana in vapes? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So you can't buy readily made marijuana vapes maybe at the marijuana stores, but not out at the gas stations or anything like that. But um, people are creating their own um, waxes and butters, what they're called. So if you kind of see here, this is a butter that they create and they'll put it inside the cartridge and smoke it. Again, this is more harmful than just smoking regular marijuana. The vape really creates a very dangerous um, chemical reaction and then the inhalation of it is very dangerous for your lungs. <clears throat> So, anybody ever heard how vaping can kind of explode sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, in the middle, there's pictures of a vape exploded um, in their mouth. <laughs> this one, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but a vape exploded in his pant pocket. So, it burned his leg, and that was pretty bad. And that's just one just starting to burn there. There's been a lot, if you go on YouTube, there's been a lot of different recorded instances of vapes blowing up yeah, or pictures of these that fit in oh yeah we could talk after because i could come and scare them yeah. <laughs> don't worry That's no really there's safe. Oh, it's completely safe. yeah, yeah. the real the biggest problem is that you have a usually a battery in there but then you also have a heating um, element in there that doesn't mix right. and that is constantly on it's not turned off Mm-hmm. Yes. In, in combination with the battery. Yeah. Yes. Or yeah. all the genitals. Oh, yeah. Oh, when it burns, it's not usually a small burn. It usually kind of explodes. Yeah. There's there's it's stuff in there that powerful. really just wants to get out. And yeah. Yeah. So it will explode. <laughs> so their target market, um, the industry's target youth with sweet, cheap, and easy ways to get these products. Has anybody ever noticed all around town, if you even go, drive by a gas station, there is some type of advertisement for vaping? There usually is. <laughs> you will notice now that I told you that because somebody told me that years ago and I was like, oh, yeah, every single time you'll see it. <laughs> um, a lot of these posters or advertisements are going to be really targeted towards youth. So look at the colors on there, look at the people on there. It's gonna target youth. Um, they'll put people on there that look like, you know, Justin Bieber or look like, you know, somebody that's popular nowadays. Um, they'll put bright colors and they'll make it look very fun and exciting. So people that, when, cig or when cigarettes were very popular back in the day, if you've ever looked at any of those advertisements, they look, you know, young, fun, and... Like cartoons. Yes. So they're doing the same thing with vaping, pretty much. So tobacco product um, use among high school students in 2018. Um, E-cigarettes are the highest one. So any tobacco product, 27%. E-cigarettes are 20%.
So this is a graph showing um, middle and high school kids who currently use e-cigarettes or any tobacco products. But you see how right here, in the end of 2017, it just spiked. Guess what came out at the end of 2017? Jewels. <laughs> exactly. So this, that's where it really started going all the way up. And I just pulled this data because I wanted like the, the freshest data I could get, I guess. Um, so 2018, it's showing how big of a spike that is. Um, it's gone up, I believe, at least 10% um, by year, how much they're smoking e-cigarettes. So in San Alec County, I did a little research. Um, anybody ever heard of MiFi? If you ever work in the schools, you might. But that is a Michigan um, youth survey that they'll take around to the schools. And so kids will answer, hopefully, honestly. But so I pulled the data about e-cigarettes from there. So what percentage of middle schoolers smoke e-cigarettes in this county, do you think? Blow your mind. 30%. 30%? Not as bad as you guys thought. <laughs> you guys all just like put it aside early. Um, so this is really their experimental part. So this is reported use in the past 30 days though. So when they were doing this um, test, only 9.4% reported that. Usually it's underreported because who wants to admit I'm smoking an e-cigarette right. when they're 10 or 11, they shouldn't be doing that. Um, and their age of first use was 10.5, they said, for tobacco products um, for middle schoolers. Mm. Okay, so what percentage of high, schools, um, so high schoolers smoke e-cigarettes around this county? 20%. 20? 15. 36.2. If you guys remember the slide a couple um, slides ago, 20% of high school students are smoking it. We are way above average here. So, and we are above average for middle schoolers also. And you'd be amazed at the people that are doing Oh, yes. But, but they have to be 18 to buy cigarettes. To buy to buy cigarettes, yes. Yeah, to buy cigarettes. Yep. But there's no age limit on, on yes. Yes. There is. Um, regulation in Michigan. <laughs> um, so the FDA enacted a regulation on e-cigarettes in 2016. It banned the sale of e-cigarettes with nicotine in it. Um, those younger, to those younger than 18. Um, Michigan has no state law affirming that regulation. So law enforcement can't keep kids from purchasing the nicotine delivery devices. They can purchase the devices, but it just can't have the actual juice in it. But where are they getting the other stuff from? Yeah, just like, where do they get beer? Yeah, I'm just going to say. So, I don't really think they're doing the e-cigs. I think they're doing more of the jewels. Yes. Than anything. So they can buy it without the cartridges in it. Right. They can also um, get empty cartridges to fill. So if there's an empty cartridge, they could also purchase that if it was empty. So then they would just have to purchase the juice somewhere. Yeah. Um, and the only regulation is no vaping in schools. That's actually, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> that's from your uh, statements, I don't think that that's happening. But that's the only regulation for Michigan. There's not a regulation unless you know the actual organization makes that, saying you can't vape inside here. So you could. Penalty. Yep, so I mean, <laughs> depending. Jail or something? No, that, that's Maybe the thing. Like, like, we're not yeah. having a lot of regulation on this because it's not mandated by the state, so they can't it's do anything. I mean, about. you catch them and. Exactly, that's it. exactly. So there's a big problem with that. <clears throat> so, where are they getting them if they can't get at the store? So, they'll buy the devices usually at stores or they'll get it from a friend or things like that. I went online today to purchase some, just to see if I could purchase some. All that popped up was, are you at least 18 years old? And if I clicked yes, it let me into that site and I can buy it. Mm -hmm. no. There, and if you just type in <laughs> e-juice or vaping or anything like that, that's where it just, it allows you to purchase that. So I mm -hmm. searched a little, <laughs> I digged a little deeper there too. So what information is collected? It says during the age verification process, we collect your name, address, and date of birth. How, how many people know how to lie? 
<laughs> so people can lie about their date of birth. How are they going to really check it? Um, so it says this information is collected automatically through the checkout page. Um, we'll use this information to verify your age through our extensive database. I think that's a lie. I don't think they really have an extensive database that really tells you how old you are. Um, any, I went to five or six different sites today, and all that popped up was that your age verification, click yes if you're over 18. That's how they're verifying. So purchase of e-juice is happening online a lot. They can also purchase the devices online. <clears throat> And those are my references. So now it's open for questions. Anything? <laughs> I don't understand how come there's laws against smoking cigarettes, mm -hmm. but yet not with this, it, because it sounds like, you know, the second hand smoke, there's still. Yeah, well, there's not enough research for it. That's the problem. Because it only started in 20, um, 2006, um, they don't have extensive research saying it's bad for you. So they're just starting to come out with the research because finally, you know, it's been 10 years, so that's a really good research time um, to see the dangers and effects. So that's a huge thing. I, mean, what, I wonder what the numbers are for um, people that are using it that are having cancer because it took a while with the mm -hmm. cigarettes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the same exact thing. But they're seeing whatever results they have seen so far, it's the same as cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So really it's just taking, you know, policy to change. That's what we need to do. But, you know, the FDA is actually starting to realize how dangerous it is. Like, they approve of half those chemicals that are in there for eating. <laughs> um, so they, they need to... They were not going to be eaten when they approved them? Well, th that's the thing. They didn't think about them all together and then when you heat it. Because they didn't test it because they're like, oh, it's safe to eat. So... It's not being eaten. So, yeah, that's where all this research that is happening is coming into play. There was a big win um, when Juul was mandated to take out of any um, advertisement on TV and social media. So that was recent. I think that was in the last five months. So they're starting to crack down on things. Not fast enough, I don't think, but um, again, it's we don't have the research saying it's not safe. So really it's starting to come out and people are starting to realize do you know what percentage of adults vape, and can you vape in public? You can vape in public. So I don't know the exact percentage, but um, vaping... Be a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. it is a lot more, I think, than you think. But I also um, think a lot of adults still smoke cigarettes. So, I mean, combined together, it's going to be something, um, I would say, probably like around what the high school is were like 30 percent. But you know when, when, they're, when they're smoking cigarettes and then they go into a restaurant mm -hmm. and they can't have a cigarette mm -hmm. after their meal because I have a friend that did that and I'm mm -hmm. going, are you kidding me? But after she had her dinner then she pulled out her little e-cig. Yes. You know. So, but it's okay to have it in the restaurant because exactly. it really doesn't set off anything like exactly. the cigarette smoke. Yes. And then you look at the workforce where people are not allowed to, to smoke on the job mm -hmm. or on the right. premise or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a sneak way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things happening that are um, pushing people into using vaping. And I feel like, too, how you said, like, society portrays it as a healthier mm -hmm. version. Like, I've heard people say, well, I cut back on cigarettes mm -hmm. and I'm vaping a little bit more now. Yes. It, like I did read some really research good. saying that it does help adults quit smoking. Okay. It does not help youth quit smoking. It uh, makes them more addicted, um, especially the ones with nicotine in it, and it usually leads them to smoking regular cigarettes anyways. Well, that's a great question. So do most of them go from I think this to 91% percent that vaped oh. smoke cigarettes hmm. after so many years. Or... It's good to yeah. Tobacco company. Right. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. I missed the first part, and I apologize for it. I work at the Career Center, and we're dealing with it because the students, high school students, <laughs> they've got it wrapped around something, and before they know it, you don't even know what's going on. They've taken a drag mm -hmm. and a way, yeah. you know, yes. class yeah. just continues. Yes. So they're starting to try to monitor that right in the classes. Yes. And right now, they don't know exactly it's, what it's they're going to do. It's ridiculous. It's 
hard and kids still are, you know, it's not harmful. Yeah, they're, they're yes, it is. Yes, it is. We yes. had a gentleman come in and he had um, talked about his addictions and that type of thing. And I thought he was a really good speaker. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that came out of that was my kids are going, oh, he's just full of crap. It's not going to hurt me. And I'm going, mm -hmm. and you, know, make, you know, he was talking about how the chemicals will heat. Yep. And what, yeah, these things go in it and they may not be harmful, but mm -hmm. when you heat them and mix them. Yes. And then suck them into your lungs. That's the danger. What type of danger are you putting yourself into? And the mm -hmm. kids are going, they're just playing, you know, they put the blinders on. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. He, that, that, no, that's not going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, so I'm waiting to see down the road. Yes. Yeah. How many of kids have cancer yeah. at a very young age? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it just they blows just my mind because they just <laughs> refuse. Oh, really? To yeah. Take the yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, ordered um, a new program about vaping because I'm in some of the schools. We're doing some preventive education. And so we want to, we know that all the schools oh, yeah. are having such a hard time with it. So yeah. yeah. There's a lot of pulmonary diseases mm -hmm. that they associate with smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Are these same diseases associated with the e-cigarettes, like the COPD, the eczema? Mm -hmm. Lung cancer, that's all Yes, with yeah. I, I did see um, for sure lung mm -hmm. cancer. Um, again, the length of time the e-cigarettes has been out, that's the big problem about not proving that they're more harmful. Um, but I did see a definite link to the lung cancer um, because the nicotine and the formaldehyde are the parts that really um, contribute to that. <clears throat> And then also with like COPD and everything else, like the popcorn lungs is more prevalent in e-cigs than it is in regular cigarettes. So there's a lot of correlation, I guess. Are other illegal drugs vaped besides marijuana? Um, I have heard that they are, um, but it's not common, I would say. Marijuana is yeah. the most common, but they can get yeah. THC that has very high levels in it. So it could be dangerous to do that too because they would get a little bit too high. They might have explained it, but I guess I'm confused too as far as what's the difference between a jewel, the jewel and an e cigarette? It's just a condensed version? Mm -hmm. It's just the way it looks. Mm -hmm. it, it looks Same just exact like a little, thing. It's, it's just so nervous. sleek looking and you know, appealing to. Mm -hmm. It's easier for and, high. It's it's really At first, the biggest down. problem was people didn't know what it was because it really hooks into your computer to charge. Mm -hmm. Like, it looks like a USB. So, it's scary. What's THC? THC is the psychoactive um, chemical in pot. Oh. <laughs> Stuff that gets you high. Okay. Oh, <laughs> CBD oil, too. CBD doesn't get you high. It just takes, so it, it's like the pain reducer. <clears throat> Um, yes, it, but you won't get high from it. It's the oil of the flowers is what I understand. I talked to Steve Kenny about it. Yes. And again, the oils go through their body differently. Yep. The THC the is the part that does the psychoactive in your head. You um, have to be careful though when purging the CBD oil because there are some that are still manufactured with the THC in it. Yes. And a lot of it's, I think a lot of it's still unregulated even though state of Michigan passed, you know, um, marijuana legalization, they're having a hard time keeping up with everything and making sure everything's regulated correctly. So that's something that needs to be um, looked at and make sure that if you are going to be using it, then use it with a safe amount. <clears throat> Who's out there checking all this stuff and hopefully going to pass some, <laughs> some laws about this? Well, um, there, you know, independent study type things. Um, a lot of people that are, that would um, research cigarettes are researching this now because it's, they're finding the same things. So they're, you know, being able to prove them wrong and say, hey, this is dangerous or more dangerous. So this can cause um, a lot of health problems. So a lot of medical um, places are doing that. And Yes, especially being able to do it inside. Mm -hmm. That's right thing. I mean, I think it was um, changing the way that we view cigarettes, mm -hmm. them making it not legal inside anywhere. That changed the whole yeah. game with that, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's when mm -hmm. I think really the vaping. That's when it started. Mm -hmm. 2006. Well, once they find out the harm and they don't do anything about it, it's just like the same thing as cigarettes, probably. 
you know, oh, with you. you know, and yeah. it takes a while, but then everybody's addicted, so. Mm -hmm. you know, after, after we had the speaker come into the high school, and, and I thought he was really, you know, this man had had some really hard knocks in his life, and managed to get, a, get his act together, and so he was going out and telling his story, and I'm sitting there listening to him, and I'm going, I wouldn't have wanted to go through what this man went through. And so the kids who were talking about it when they got back, and they said, well, you got to die from something some way. <laughs> you know, and I'm going, well, I'd like to live a little longer. Yeah. They don't realize it can happen to them, though. That's where they're at. Right. Unless something happens to, like, a close friend, I feel like that, you know, they're so worried about their peers at that point that that tends to influence them. Well, it's cool right now. You think you're getting away with something good? Yeah, exactly. So it, it's really taking the path of cigarettes. Like that's it, that's what I really see on um, the trends of that. This I understand too is a man-made substance, and with these young kids, their brain is not function or is not formed properly, and they're again not knowing exactly what's going to happen once that man-made chemical gets into the brain. And yeah, there again, like you said, with the research is what we've got to worry about. Yep, so when um, it's so much more dangerous for youth than it is for adults, and I always preach that because kids' brains aren't developed, fully developed until you're about 25. So if you're going to do something bad, do it after 25. <laughs> That's what I always tell people. <laughs> but don't do it at all, actually. But um, um, yeah, so it really can help or it can um, harm uh, your co cognitive function, um, it can harm your learning abilities, it can harm a lot of different things. Um, by using any of these substances, so nicotine, anything like that. Um, and that's why it, it's a big message for kids to stay away from substances in general because their brains are not developed, so that's correct. Thank you very much, Janelle.